Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, looking at Month 2, Operations and Relations of Sets. In this video, we're taking a look at the Intersection Theorem. Now, if the union of every set is also a set, one might wonder if the intersection of every set is also a set. With the axioms we currently have, we can prove that in fact the answer is no. There is exactly one set whose intersection is not a set, but the intersections of all other sets are in fact sets. Often an outlier, the null set is the problematic set. In this video, we're going to show that the intersection of every other set is a set, except the null set. In the next video, we're going to prove that the intersection of the null set is not a set, because in fact it is the universal class. Okay? This theorem, which was given as the exercise from the last video, can be proven without the union axiom that we just assumed. If you've not tried proving it yet, give it a shot. The exact statement you're trying to prove is for all x, x is a member of v, and it's not the case that x is the null set, implies that the intersection of x is a member of the universe. Or, in other words, the intersection of x is a set. We're going to refer to this as the intersection theorem in proofs. So give that a try now. If you've already tried it, you want me to show you how to do it in a formal, very systematic way, let's go. So, the conclusion we're shooting for is this. What we're going to do to prove it is we're going to do an in assumed indirect proof, so we'll assume the negation. We'll pull that negation inside our quantifier using change of quantifier to get there exists some x such that it's not the case. And then we will existentially instantiate that x to a. Then we'll use implication. We have an implication on the inside to get a disjunction and then distribute our farthest out negation using de Morgan's law and double negation to get basically an affirmation of the antecedent of our implication and a negation of the consequent because that is the only way in which this situation would be false, which is why we're doing an assumed indirect proof. If we can show that this leads to a contradiction, the that the implication inherent in our conclusion is something that must be true because the only way it would be false leads to a contradiction, then we've proven our argument. So we'll simplify out the ending of that. The It's not the case that the intersection of A is a member of V, as well as simplifying out the other constitutive parts. So we basically have A is a member of the universe. It's not the case that A is the null set, and it's not the case that the intersection of A is a member of V. Now, we'll use our null set definition and universally instantiate that A to A to get A is equal to the null set is materially equivalent to for all B. B is not a member of A. The reason we're doing this is so that we can use modus tollens in a few steps to show that it is, in fact, the case that A has some member. So we'll split up our... Material equivalence into two implications, and then we'll simplify that down to another implication. We'll go ahead and use universal instantiation to be able to work with this a little bit easier. We'll instantiate B to W to remember it was a universal variable. Um, and then we'll use modus tollens to show it's not the case that W is not a member of A. Which means that if we use our non-membership definition and double negation, W is a member of A. And remember, W is something that is a universal variable that we can reinstantiate back to a universal claim. So now we will take A1, which was our first axiom, and universally instantiate that. So that gets us if W is a member of A and A is a member of V, that implies that W is a member of V. So W is a set if we can show that A is a member of V. Well, we also do have A is a member of V, so we can join that with premise 16 to get the first half of premise 17's implication, and then use good old-fashioned modus ponens to show that W is a member of V. So now we're going to go ahead and use our subclass definition and universally instantiate that to get the intersection of A is a subclass of W means that, or is equal to, for all X, X is a member of the intersection of A implies that X is a member of W. That's just what it means for something to be a subclass. 
we'll go ahead and use our definition of absolute intersection to show that if the intersection of A equals the intersection of A, that just means that for all X, X is a member of the intersection of A is materially equivalent to for all Y. Y is a member of A implies that X is a member of Y. Of course, we have the intersection of A is equal to the intersection of A by just identity and universal instantiation. So we can conclude the second half of that statement that for all X, X is a member of the intersection of A is materially equivalent to for all Y, y is a member of a implies that x is a member of y now we got to go on to a second page because this is a long one but just wait for later in this month we will have much longer proofs so some of the premises that we need from the last page we need premise six it's not the case that the intersection of a is a member of the universe we need premise 16 that w is a member of a we need that w is a member of the universe we need our subclass definition. And we're going to need our this proof that we've done of what it means for A to something to be the intersection of A. Now we're going to take on an assumed indirect proof where we're going to deny this statement that for all X, X is a member of the intersection of A implies that X is a member of W. We'll use our normal tricks for dealing with the negation of a universally quantified implication statement of moving that inside the implication and then existentially instantiating it using implication to split that up using De Morgan's law and double negation to get a nice conjunction that we can split up into S is a member of the intersection of A and it's not the case that S is a member of W. From premise 23, universal instantiation, we can now instantiate that into our S that we pulled out and show that S is a member of the intersection of A is materially equivalent to for all Y. If Y is a member of A, that implies that S is a member of Y. We'll go ahead and use equivalence to pull this out and pick one of those implications that's going to be more useful to us and use Well, pick both of the implications that we want. And then we have W is a member of A implies that S is a member of W. That's from 34 universal instantiation. So we're instantiating Y to W. It should be clear why we're doing that. And then we can get S is a member of W from 1635 modus ponens. And then we have S is a member of W, and it's not the case that S is a member of W from 30, 36 simplification. This is, of course, a problem because that means that we have a contradiction. If we have a contradiction, that means we can pull out of our assumed indirect proof and say that it is the case that for all X, if X is a member of the intersection of A, that implies that X is a member of W. Therefore... The intersection of A is a subclass of W. So we've proven the second half of 20. That was the whole point of that indirect proof from 24 to 37. We've proven the second half of that. So now we pull back into the intersection of A is a subclass of W. Now, if we universally instantiate our second axiom, we have the intersection of A is a subclass of W and W is a member of V implies that the intersection of A is a member of V. Of course, we're able to put together that antecedent because we've just proved that the intersection of A is a subclass of W and earlier we proved that W is a member of V. And by modus ponens, therefore, we have the intersection of A is a member of V, but that's a problem because we have the intersection of A is not a member of V from earlier in premise 6, which was the conclusion of our statement here, which means we can universally instantiate back out our X through, well, not universal instantiation, excuse me, through the proof of our indirect proof from 1 through 43, we can show that for all X, X is a member of V, and it's not the case that X equals the null set implies the intersection of X is a member of V, which is what we were trying to prove from the beginning. So basically, we have shown that if you are a set 
that is not the null set, then your intersection is also a set. Up next, we're going to do another monster proof, looking at what is the intersection of the null set. And the answer, big surprise, is the universal class. So try this. Answer is going to be in the next video. Prove that the intersection of the null set is simply the universal class. Note that you will need to claim that the intersection of the null set is a class and the definition of a class from very early in the series in order to do this formally. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Watch a new video every single day for the entire month of October. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you know when we have new videos coming out. And as always, stay skeptical, everybody.